Yes, we're not out here to trick people or to make a ton of money. We're here because we've experienced amazing things internally. And, you know, I know that a lot of things I've had, things have improved for me in terms of the way I relate with people and the way I am as a person. And you can't ask for anything more rewarding than that. You had spent so much time concentrating on this one very all-consuming art. Um, famous sculptor Richard McDonald, um, I talked to him personally at his gallery and um, he just said dance is probably the most difficult art form there is and he has total respect for it and that's why he sculpts dancers a lot. The little company that I have right now, um, most of them came to me riddled with doubts and preconceived notions about their limitations what kind of dancer they could be, so forth and so on. Um, and so I had to do hardcore battle in changing those minds, you know, in, a, in an authentic way. Oh, hello. Hi. <laughs> All right, there you go. Um, let's see. Okay. Well, I know it's different for all of us having taking class from John, we all come from very different backgrounds, and um, I just kind of wrote a couple notes on what um, what I've experienced in the past four years dancing with John. It's It's been, you know, filled, I'm sure you guys could all agree with me, but um, the growth that I have been through as a person on an emotional level, on a physical level, on all levels, has just been amazing. And um, uh, just the challenges that just dance alone presents um, for me has been... Um, has just helped me grow in so many ways. So when people ask me where I train, you know, where I, I take class maybe occasionally somewhere else, and there's always something unique about the way, way I dance. Like when Erica and I remember when we took class um, for the Royal Academy, people look at us and they just kind of are, um, they just kind of wonder what, what it is, why, why our training is just different from all the other conventional students out there. And it's kind of hard to describe what we do in the classroom, but I think a big part of it is that um, that we're approaching it from the, the inside out. Here, boom, soft and round. Now when I extend, am I, am I shaking around? No, and I'm like, move, strong baby. Reaching and yawning forever. But yet I can be very soft. Right? Right? That's what you want. Right? You're going to have all this wonderful ability, right? Texture. I mean, in a way, we could say this is building a safer community. This is building more, um, people are more secure in themselves. They, they, they're they starting to feel more things. They're feeling more positive. I mean, it's it's... It has a lot of really neat possibilities. Yeah, and also it's it's not just ballet in this small box, but it's something that can be expanded to the community. Anybody, mm -hmm. even if they don't even like ballet, mm -hmm. we can. There are things about self awareness and things that we have really gained that anybody can really benefit from in so many ways. This is like something that can seep into the entire world, not something that you know just little prissy dancers are supposed to do or mm -hmm. you know. Sure, you can make a difference like selling, you know, selling something, a, a, a material good, but you can't, you can't carry that with you your entire life. That material thing will break, it will disintegrate, but this thing will be with you forever. Because Hartfield makes dance, but makes ballet personal, Almost anyone could basically make it their own and succeed and be proficient at the art of ballet.
what I do is all encompassing. I deal with the spirit, the psyche, and the, obviously the body. The body is the last thing. You know, obviously understanding the structure and stuff is vitally important. But we try to tie emotional understanding to how you are functioning. It's called bonding. You know, so that way you have a reference point on, on, on an emotional, childlike level. I was trained, fortunately, by some of the best in, in that field, but they were extremely short-sighted overall because they only catered to the type of body that would do it for them. And so they were basically handing out you know, platitudes a lot. And if they were really nice, people loved you. But um, it really wasn't eliciting in numbers the results that it should be because no one was really honoring the individual. And so I get great pleasure, I don't care if it's one, two, or ten people, you know, when they start making these wonderful fundamental changes and all of a sudden things start happening for them, I'm going, yeah, all right, this is cool. All right, their, their, their career, their future, whatever, you know, if, if they continue to dance or do something else, they can carry that information in any other area of their life, because this is an art form, art, expression, life. I know someone who, uh, she took here for about eight months, she took from John, and I st that was about a year and a half or two years ago, and I still hear about it. And I still hear about her learning things from him and discovering things that she learned. She's brought that with her throughout life. Maximizing your limitations is my attitude, not low, knowing your limitations, maximizing your limitations. So what's your ideal attitude to look for? Just sheer energy, that they really love what they're doing. Because when I have that, then I've got just about everything I need. Um, I can over, you know, overcome anything with that. That's why this technique works so well is because once you get it, it's really you that's dancing. And when people watch that, they feel that. Just like when you work with somebody or you, you have a heart for somebody and you're telling them you love them or you're telling them that I'm getting emotional by telling you. <laughs> but you know, you can feel that and you can feel that by movement too. Because there's a lot of people that can't express themselves through words, but they can, they can express themselves through movement. And that's a very powerful thing. Art too. Uh, expose people to um, different ways of seeing life in a sense, in other words. So it's not just taking you off the street and exposing you to this thing and kind of, um, um, you know, kind of in introducing an, an art form on a remedial level. You're actually just saying, hey, if you're going to be here, then you're going to get the highest caliber training, all right, irregardless of what your ambitions are. So that when you do walk out, whether you do dance or not, you have a definite appreciation, you walk out with knowledge and, you know, a level of competency. Have this view of what ballet should be, mm -hmm. this really sort of stuffy kind of art, and we want to bring, we want people to realize that it's not like that. Right. It's this healing, wonderful, beautiful thing that shows has shown all of us so much about ourselves and the world. Every time I go looking for that one thing, I always find that it's hitched to everything else in the universe. Right? There's no disconnection anywhere. And so you don't want to make this you know, ballet and jazz or acting or whatever separate. You know, they're very much akin to one another. It's just a different way of expression. And expression is a very universal thing. So we want to make sure that we're keeping that in mind and not putting ourselves in those little boxes that are so hazardous to our just who we are, because we're not, we didn't come out of a box, you know, where we came out of, <laughs> in a pretty mysterious place, so we don't want to be putting ourselves in a box to feel safe or secure. 
Um, we want to try to feel more security in that chaotic sense because that's where we come from and that's where all the information comes from and, and you want to express with that sense of freedom, uh, the universality in a sense. example I always use is, you know, if you have a perspective about, you know, where you think you live, okay, let's say you live in a valley and you, you think you know your valley from your living room window or your front yard or whatever because you're looking at it every day. So if somebody takes you by the hand and says, I'm going to take you around your valley, every point of the valley, at different times of the day, at different times of the year, and you're going to discover an infinite number of valleys that you had no awareness of whatsoever. And that valley represents your inner perspective of yourself. And that's what I do when I'm teaching. I don't force you to do anything other than to see yourself from all these different perspectives. So that way you have no choice but to be infected by that. And either you run away or you deal with the issue of creating that change by accepting the difference that you're seeing.